Good day, everyone. There are a number of different ways to analyze financial statements. The most applied is the financial ratio. Financial ratio is a comparison in fraction, proportion, decimal, or percentage of two significant figures taken from financial statements. It expresses the direct relationship between two or more quantities in the statement of financial position and statement of comprehensive income of a business firm. Okay, and the financial ratios can be categorized as follows. First, we have liquidity ratios. This is the firm's ability to pay off debts that are maturing within a year or within the next operating cycle. Leverage ratios. Evaluate a company's debt levels. Efficiency ratios measure how well a company is utilizing its assets and resources. Profitability measures a company's ability to generate income relative to revenue, balance sheet assets, operating costs, and equity. And market value ratios what investors think about the firm and its future prospects. Okay, now let's go to liquidity ratios. The first liquidity ratio is current ratio or working capital ratio, which is equal to current assets over current liabilities. Okay. And it measures the capability of a business to meet its short-term obligations that are due within a year. Okay, for example, if a business holds Okay, cash, 100,000, and so on. So first, let's get the current assets. So current assets is equal to cash, 100,000, plus marketable securities of 120,000 pesos, plus inventory of 170,000 pesos, which is equal to 390,000 pesos. Now the current liabilities. A short-term debt of 100,000 pesos plus the accounts payable of 90,000 pesos. A total current liability of 190,000 pesos. Thus, the current ratio for this example is 2.0x. So the business currently has a current ratio of 2, meaning it can easily settle each peso on loan or accounts payable twice, a rate of more than one suggests financial well-being for the company. Okay. Another one is acid test ratio or quick ratio, which is equal to cash and cash equivalents plus marketable securities plus accounts receivable over current liabilities. Okay. So cash and cash equivalents are the most liquid current assets on a company's balance sheet, such as savings accounts, a term deposit with a maturity of fewer than three months. Okay. Marketable securities, these are liquid financial instruments that can be readily converted into cash. And accounts receivable, our money owed to the company from providing customers with goods and or services. So current liabilities, so these are debts or obligations due within one year. Another formula for asset test ratio is current assets minus inventories over okay, total current liabilities. Okay, the logic why inventories is deducted from current liabilities is that inventory can often be slow moving and thus cannot readily be converted into cash. Additionally, if it were required to be converted quickly into cash, it would most likely be sold at a steep discount to the carrying cost on the balance sheet. Okay, so the asset test Ratio or quick ratio measures how sufficient a company's short-term assets are 
to cover its current liabilities. Okay. So for example, okay, this one, we have two companies, company A and company B. So the asset test ratio for company A is three. Okay. So 95,000 current assets minus 5,000 of inventories divided by 75,000 minus 45,000. Okay, so that's three. So please take note that to determine the current liabilities for each company, total liabilities are subtracted from non-current liabilities. Okay. So... The higher the ratio, the better the company's liquidity and overall financial health. A ratio of two implies that the company owns two peso of liquid assets to cover each one peso of current liability. So it says the higher the ratio, the better. So that means three okay, is better than 1.88. So company A is better in terms of... Uh, a, this one paying its liabilities than company B. Okay. Another liquidity ratio is cash ratio or cash asset ratio, which is equal to cash and cash equivalents over current liabilities. Okay. And it indicates a, company, a company's capacity to pay off short-term debt obligations with its cash and cash equivalents. Okay, take for example, this balance sheet. Okay, so cash ratio is equal to 5,000 cash plus cash equivalents of 10,000 over 6,000, which is accounts payable and 5,000 that short-term debt. Okay, so that's current liabilities which is equal to 1.36. Now let's move on to the leverage ratios. First, we have debt ratio, which is equal to total liabilities over total assets. And it measures the relative amount of a company's assets that are provided from debt. Okay, example, this one, another, and the balance sheet. So debt ratio is equal to total liabilities. So that's long-term debt of 10,000 plus the total current liabilities of 11,000. So that's 21,000 pesos divided by the total assets of 57,500. So the debt ratio for this company is 0.36 or 36%. So a debt ratio greater than 1.0 or 100% tells you that a company has more debt than assets. Meanwhile, a debt ratio less than 100% indicates that a company has more assets than debt. Okay, another leverage ratio is debt to equity ratio, which is equal to total liabilities over total equity. It measures debt relative to amounts of resources provided by owners. Okay, let's take again the same example, the balance sheet. All right. So that's total liabilities, 11,000, the current, plus long-term debt of 10,000, that's 21,000, divided by the total equity, which is 36,500. So the debt to equity ratio is 0.57. So this means that for every peso in equity, the firm has 57 cents in leverage. A ratio of one would imply that creditors and investors are on equal footing in the company's assets. Okay, now let's go to efficiency ratios. First, we have asset turnover ratio, which is equal to net sales revenue over average total assets, okay? And it measures the value of revenue generated by a business relative to its average total assets for a given fiscal year. All right. For the fiscal year ended December 31, 2020, ABC Company has declared in its financial statements total assets ending balance of 40 million pesos 
while the beginning balance was 30 million pesos. So having an average asset result of 35 million pesos because that's 40 million, the ending balance, plus 30 million, the beginning balance, divide it by two to get the average asset. Okay. So total revenues reach as high as 90 million pesos generated from its main business activities. So to compute for the asset turnover ratio for ABC company, we have 90 million okay, net sales revenue divided by the total uh, the average total assets, which is 35 million. So that is 2.57. So a higher ratio indicates that the company is efficient in generating sales or revenues. A lower ratio illustrates that a company is not using the assets efficiently. All right. Another efficiency ratio is inventory turnover ratio, which is equal to cost of goods sold over average inventory. And okay, it states that the number of times a business sells and replaces its stock of goods during a given period. Example, ABC company has a cost of goods sold of 3 million pesos for the current year. The company's cost of beginning inventory was 500,000 pesos and the cost of ending inventory was 100,000 pesos. Given the inventory balances, the average cost of inventory during the year is calculated at 300,000 pesos. Okay. So how is 300,000 pesos calculated? Okay. 500,000 plus 100,000 divided by two, okay? 500,000 plus 100,000, that's 600,000 divided by two, so that's 300,000. As a result, inventory turnover is rated at 10 times a year. Okay, so that's 3 million, okay? divided by 300,000 is equal to 10. So that's the inventory turnover ratio. A high inventory turnover generally means that goods are sold faster and a low turnover rate indicates weak sales and excess inventories. Okay. Another efficiency ratio is day's sales inventory or DSI, which is equal to inventory over cost of sales times the number of days in the period. All right, for example, for the year end 2020 financial statements, XYZ company reported an ending inventory of 500,000 pesos and a cost of sales of 50 million pesos. Given the figures, the DSI for the year is 3.65 days, meaning it takes approximately four days for the company to sell its stock of inventory. So how is it computed? So that is inventory, so 500,000, okay, ending inventory, divided by the cost of sales, which is 50 million, times 365 days, okay, in one year. So that's 3.65 days, or four days, okay. Now let's go to profitability ratios. We have gross margin ratio, which is equal to total revenue minus cost of goods sold over total revenue. So it shows how much profit a company makes after paying off its cost of goods sold or COGS. All right, so let's use the income statement, this one as an example. Okay, so here, revenue minus cost of goods sold is gross profit. And gross profit margin, 68% is computed okay, by dividing 63,007 uh, 63, divided by the revenue of 92,007. Okay, so that's 68%. Okay. And then the operating mar profit margin is 20,507. The operating profit divide it to the revenue of 92,007. So 
the operating profit margin is 22.29%. All right. Okay. So the gross margin ratio is equal to total revenue. So this is 92,007 minus the cost of goods sold, 29,000 divided by the total revenue. So the gross margin ratio is 0.6848 or 68.48%. Okay. So this means that for every peso generated, right, 0.3152, okay, 0.3152 is calculated 1 minus 0.6848 would go into the cost of goods sold, while the remaining 0.6848 would be used to pay back expenses, taxes, etc. Okay, return on assets ratio is equal to net income over average assets. So it measures the profitability of a business in relation to its total assets. All right, so let's take the balance sheet and the income statement from the previous examples. All right. So the return on assets ratio is equal to net income. So the net income, this one, 16,007, divided by the average assets, which is okay, 57,500. So the return on asset is 0.2783 or 27.83%. This means that for every peso of assets the company invests in, it returns 27 cents in net profit per year. All right. So for the market value ratios, we have book value per share ratio, which is equal to shareholders equity minus preferred equity divided by the total common shares outstanding. We also have dividend yield ratio is equal to dividend per share over sh share price. Earnings per share ratio equal to net earnings over total shares outstanding. Price earnings ratio, which is equal to share price over earnings per share. All right. Thank you so much for watching. That's all for the financial ratios.